Hi everyone, this is Tim at Makers Machining again. We're uh, getting ready to go into the new year, 2019 here, and thought we'd do a little bit of a field trip and uh, show you some of the different uh, aspects of what goes into machining. We're, you know, Makers Machining is primarily about machining, but uh, when you start making a job, you're, you're using either a bar of steel or a piece of plate, or maybe you've gotten the piece of plate cut to the size you need. But you also uh, might be machining something that somebody's welded or fabricated together. Uh, you know, you get the weldment made, you stress relieve it so it doesn't move after, after you've machined it. You don't want it to lose its accuracy. Uh, or you might machine a casting. So we're, we're here today in a pattern shop to talk about uh, where, pattern, where castings come from. It starts in a pattern shop where uh, somebody makes an item that's similar to what your cast piece is going to be and gets it cast uh, at the foundry and then it goes out and gets gets machined so with without any further ado here i'm gonna get uh, get together here with a couple of pattern makers that have been in the trade for a few years and we're going to go take a look at some of the the work they do and explain have them just explain probably better than i could what patterns are and and how they are used to make castings so we'll uh take this over here and and walk around and start looking at some of the different ways these guys uh, do their work now we're talking here with Bert and Art today and they've got a little shop that they work in here we're in Northwest Indiana and uh, about an hour out of Chicago and these guys like I said have been at it for quite a few years and uh, they got a couple of projects that they're gonna walk us through here a little bit on we might have to do this in a couple of segments but uh, we're gonna see what uh, what kind of parts they make. We're in a, a building here that's, uh, Bert, what year was this building built? I'm introducing you to Bert here. So, the building was built in? 1870. 1870, and what uh, what do you think they've done here over the last 150 years? <laughs> Axe handle factory, a cement block, auto body shop, uh, and then a hobby shop. And we make patterns. You guys have been here since 1986? Yeah. Okay. Now, one thing I might add here, you know, there's a lot of uh, woodworking equipment in here. And I worked in a pattern shop briefly in my career. And uh, one of the first things you'll notice is the, the great smell of the wood. Uh, if you go to a lumber yard and walk around, you can smell wood in there. But a lot of it's the treated lumber. And it's kind of a damp smell. Uh, when they when they make patterns out of wood, they use clear pine or mahogany or maybe some other types of wood that have been dried. And uh, the the smell that you have in a pattern shop is just great. Uh, the the smell of the wood. Mix that with a little smell of bondo or uh, paint because uh, patterns get painted as, after they get done to keep the integrity of the wood in place. Anyhow, um, we're going to talk to Bert here about a couple projects he's got going here. Uh, first thing that, that they've got to do is maybe make a print and a layout of what they're doing. So, Bert, I'm going to let you uh, talk a little bit about what you've got here, what you're, what you're making. So go right ahead. Okay, the drawing is here on the table for that job that you just saw in the lathe. And then all this stuff goes to a hobby guy in Florida. Uh, this is a fence post for somebody that... I got the drawing off of this to, to enlarge the other two projects and then you got all these castings here that uh, you get a casting and we copy it for a guy who's making some kind of an antique uh, automobile air pump. Here's, here's the actual cast part. A couple pieces that fit together and here's the pattern for making the casting. So you want to explain what a pattern does as far as uh in the process here of getting a casting made we're, we're duplicating some parts what's a, what's a pattern exactly oh well, pattern will just make a hole in the sand for the mold and if you don't want any sand in there you have a core box that that'll that'll fill that void and make a hole in the casting but, uh, here's here's a, a finished casting right here uh they wouldn't have the small four holes in there uh, a machinist is going to drill that after he gets the yeah. casting, but uh, here's here's the pattern. It's made out of wood. It's very similar to the to the part here, except it's got these uh, 
core core pads or core prints on them and what that does is you'll make a, a core box that's split and they they pack sand into this core box and I believe they bake it don't they to get it good and hard some do it, it depends on the practice okay yeah so that that's the core box to make a core here's your pattern and it's got core prints or core pads on it so when they put this pattern in the uh, flask if I'm using the correct it'll, terminology yeah, it'll be molded this way yeah be turned over and then this will be put on there and there'll be a hole in the mold where this will fit yeah the, the sand core that's made there will fit you can see the this, this is the same size right here yeah you can see these these two tapered points right here on each end of this core box uh, match up with the tapered plugs on either end of the pattern this is the same length yep they're all the same length so when the mold is when the cavity is made in the mold out of sand they take this other sand piece which is the core and put it in place and then they pour the metal into the into the mold and it'll come out with a hole yep and you, yeah your casting will have this one large hole in there so you don't have to machine it it may still get machined later on because oh, yeah. uh whatever that is probably has to have an accurate size that's, that's got extra metal in there so they can machine it to size okay so there's a maybe a bearing gets pressed in there if that's a support for a, a bearing on the end of some machine or something that could be what that's used for but you can see the bottom face of this has been machined the, the two pads here where the where the holes are at and the inside diameter so wh why do you make a why do you make a casting versus just making out of a solid piece of material let's let's take a look at these two castings right here if you were going to make that part and had to machine it out of a solid block of material, you'd be there for about two weeks to do that. Here, and especially if you're going to be making numerous uh, castings of this, you make a pattern. You make a pattern, so you don't have you make the pattern once, and then you'll be able to make castings forever from that pattern. Uh, and so that's a whole lot easier to make that cast and instead of having to machine all the metal away on, on the uh, actual part if you're making a block of material. So there's the two patterns for these two parts right here. So you can, and you can build the structural integrity of the part. You've got, you know, ribs on the outside that give this, this thing strength so it doesn't uh, flex open if you're, uh, you know, this looks like some kind of a clevis arrangement for, I believe this is for some kind of old air compressor or something, or air generating machine. Uh, so, you know, you have to have some structural integrity there to, to make the, the thing handle uh, the workload. Here's, here's another part Bert was talking about. Uh, this is a counterweight that goes in this same air machine. And here's the, the part here. What do you think that thing weighs? 40 pounds or something like that? Mm -hmm. 25 or 30 anyway. Enough to make you grunt when you pick it up. So here's the pattern for it. And here's a good example here. Here's, here's a, a core print right here, core pad that when you pack sand around this pattern, you've got a, a cavity in the, in the mold, and then you have this little core box here. It makes two halves, and you fill that with this sand that we were talking about, and when you're going to cast your pattern, or cast your, pour your casting, you've taken this sand core from this box here that you make, you, you put that core in the mold where this thing is gonna be, and the result is a casting that comes out with this with this window in there. So you explained it pretty good before, Bert. You said uh, pattern is a, is a item that makes a hole in a mold and then the core you where, put where in you there. Where you don't want metal. You where you don't a, want metal, yeah. Core. Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, even, even here with this, the, the original sample part, this heavy metal piece, has some lettering on there and, and back in the day, they, people weren't able to use plastic like we are today, so they have a, what do you call that, a moldable plastic or something? Yeah, it's a, two, a two-part epoxy. Two-part epoxy, and he can take that and uh, mix it together and pack it around and pour it around the letters to create a, an exact replica of the lettering, this, and then when he goes to do the... This top part here is made out of the same material as this. Right, so he can he can exactly duplicate the use lettering that, to use a T. Just have to copy it, and I don't have to make the letters. Yep, yeah, letters can be pretty. If your penmanship's not so good, uh, letters might look kind of funny. Yeah, here's here's a couple more. They had some original 
name plaques out of metal, and he did the same thing with the with the uh, moldable plastic to make the sign yeah. again. That will fit right on here. Yeah. So they've they've created a little dam around that thing and poured this moldable plastic in there so they can uh, get the exact lettering. I, I had seen uh, Bert do that with a couple of wheel caps for a Rolls Royce, I believe it was, or something, some, mm -hmm. some time ago. <coughs> Anyhow, got a couple of split uh, patterns there. You want to tell a little bit about how the, uh, how the foundry takes and uses that? They will, the mold always comes in two halves. And they'll take the part without the pins first and make a mold. And they turn the mold over, they put the other half on the top of it and make this other half of the mold. And they take the mold apart, they take the pattern out, and they got a cavity for the casting. Also, after they've made the cavity for the for pouring the casting, the foundrymen will take and cut some uh, what do they call them? Risers and sprues and vents Anything for. Anything to get the metal into the hole. Yeah. yeah, they got to get a way to get the yeah. metal into the hole to fill the cavity, and have enough volume of metal flowing because that metal is really hot. Done, they, they dump the casting on and they cut those pieces off. They'll be they'll be stuck to the casting. Right, they, they become part of the casting. The surface where they, where they, where it <clears throat> Right, right. So the foundryman has to take the pattern. He's got a little bit of work to do after. After he gets done with his uh, making the mold, he's got to make it so they can pour the molten metal in. Uh, talking about molten metal and, and what they do with it, uh, there is uh, what they call a shrink allowance that we have to have to use when we build a, a pattern. And what that is, when metal cools down, it shrinks. So Bert's got some two foot rulers here, and they'll all say 24 inches on them, but look at all the different lengths that those rulers are. It, they all will say 24 inches, but somewhere on that ruler it'll say that the shrink allowance, or this is a shrink rule. I'm gonna zoom in on this one here. This, what this, is it, 1% one, one one shrink? That's oh. metric, 1%. Oh, that'll even throw a bigger monkey wrench into it. But somewhere on there it'll say, uh, let's see if we can see where it says what the shrink is for that particular one. Okay, this, this ruler here is 1 tenth of an inch per foot. So if you would physically measure this ruler here, it's going to be 24.2 inches long. But it's going to say 24 inches on the end. It's not going to be 24.2. This, this one's 5/16 per foot, so that'll be. Yeah, here, here's another be, one yet. So that's uh, be this five eighths be, longer. Yeah, right, right. So different metals shrink a different amount. So the pattern maker has to know what the material is going to be that they're casting, so they can make the. Uh, the pattern so it will shrink to the right size also on on surfaces on some of these uh castings here like uh, like these uh, feet right here they'll add an extra eighth of an inch of material because it's got to be machined so you you know to get a perfectly flat surface and then machine through a, a perpendicular bore in there you have to have good flat surfaces to work from you can see this deeper and yeah and a casting yeah that's right that's a good observation there uh a casting by itself is not going to be flat enough and accurate enough to, to work from. So you can see the step from here to here on the pattern is greater than what is on the finished uh, casting there. It's a little bit different step. I might, I might also show here, I don't know if this will work out real good, but uh, when, when the pattern is made, oftentimes I'll put in a, a fillet. You know, you've got two pieces that you've made and you've machined them together maybe this may not be the perfect example for that but trying to get a, uh, a radius and a corner you're going to need a fillet and so they have these leather fillets that you can glue in now I think uh, Bert says he uses more like Mondo but that creates a, a real nice radius there for the pattern to use I see we're running out of time on this little clip here so I'm going to shut this thing off and we're going to move on to another operation over here in the pattern shop, so we'll talk to you in a few minutes here.